more U.S. military boots in Europe. Is this a Biden's aggression toward Russia? What exactly is happening? My name is Sebi Kazmi and you're watching Conflict Times. Today I want to talk about what's happening in Russia and how American troops are in fact getting involved in the war which can be avoided very easily. The invasion of Russia in Ukraine is not ending anytime soon. According to Pentagon, as the US is planning to send more troops to Eastern Europe, and this bold move is set to be done to protect Europe and to send a strong message to Russian President Vladimir Putin that NATO matters to the US and its allies. Now let's look at exactly on the map where this all is happening. This is a map showing Ukraine. The red dots are showing where the Russian forces are currently massing in their thousands. You can see that the Russia has basically surrounded Ukraine with battalions, tactical groups, and on all sides, and there is an estimate 125,000 troops currently surrounding the whole country. Some experts in the United States have been analyzing satellite images and say as many as 175,000 troops could be surrounding the country very soon. There are many videos on social media of army tanks being transported throughout the country and many Russians have been witnessing a constant buildup of units moving on trains. US has confirmed that some 2,000 troops will be sent from Fort Bragg, North Carolina, to Poland and Germany. And a further thousands already in Germany will go to Romania. What does this all mean exactly for the people in Ukraine? It means that the US has already deployed 8,500 troops last month to Europe and now 3,000 more troops will be deployed to Eastern Europe in countries including Poland and Romania. Ukrainians should be more worried about the evolving situation and the possibility that an invasion could occur at any time in 2022 this year. Already countries like Australia are urging their citizens to leave Ukraine as soon as possible. US is telling its embassies, families to leave now by commercial means and just last week the UK told its embassy staff to leave. Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister Alexander Grushko has said to deploy more than 3,000 US troops in Germany, Poland and Romania is a destructive step. That makes it harder to reach a compromise over Ukraine. Vladimir Putin has accused the United States of trying to draw his country into a war in Ukraine and that US and NATO have not listened to his top security demands. Putin wants guarantee that NATO will not expand to Ukraine and that will not deploy any weapons near the Russian border and will roll back its forces from Eastern Europe. Now in this whole situation, my opinion is that President Joe Biden is doing nothing to de-escalate the situation, but is actually trying to be more destructive with his decisions to send further troops in Eastern Europe. He's not only listening to Russian demands and uh, is just ignoring them. And I don't think any president in Europe wants a war in the region as it would be a humanitarian crisis, a disaster. And I think the only solution going forward would be for President Joe Biden to step back and not send troops into Eastern Europe. These steps would send a clear message. The war is not the answer and that diplomacy and dialogue is the only solution. Last week, a very good friend of mine sent one of my video to uh, one of his close friends in Russia. And this guy works for the government. When he looks at the video, he actually agreed that President Joe Biden is in fact provoking the war. Russia does not want to engage. However, the presence of these 175,000 troops, they tell a different story. If Russia has no intention to invade Ukraine, what are these troops doing there? Why don't Russia pull back all these troops and say, Ukraine and NATO and US, Germany, France, let's sit together and talk. Last week, 
they had a discussion. Germany, France, Ukraine, and Russia. They had an eight hours long discussion to come up to the, to the decision that they will all try to de-escalate the situation. And surprisingly, they did not invite the United States in that meeting. Because there is a reason, because Germany is buying all the Russians gas and 86 million household over there are utilizing this gas. So Germany don't want any type of war right now. In fact, none of these NATO countries or European countries, they want to see any war because they know if this starts, America is a far away from there. They will not have any harm or catastrophe built up in there. But if anything goes wrong in Europe, all these countries, those who are directly involved or indirectly involved, they will all suffer. Regardless of if you win the war or if you lose the war, at the end of the day, it costs you human lives and lots and lots of weapons and millions or sometimes billions of dollars per day. And at the end, you get nothing. You're watching Conflict Times. My name is Sebi Kazmi. Keep watching my channel and please press the button like, share and subscribe.